Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Comedy this hour with an episode of The Red Skelton Show. This was originally broadcast on January 15, 1946. The show was originally sponsored by the Raleigh Cigarette Company. Now, one of the things that that means is that we've had to excise all the comments about Raleigh being the sponsor. I had to specifically remove all of the commercials as well. However, there were a lot of music in the show, too, quite frankly. So we've had to remove that, and we've had to, well, we've removed some of the promotions. But basically, we had to yank all the Raleigh cigarette mentions out of the show, which means the show's not quite the length that we like to have the show. But having somebody like Red Skeleton on is really a delight because you get to hear three bits, three pieces of his characters in this show. And, uh, of course... Probably the funniest thing about Red Skelton is not only his monologue, but his characters. And they are all just delightful. So we hope you enjoy hearing Junior and uh, J. Newton Numskull. Uh, and uh, <laughs> just sit back and enjoy Red Skelton. This originally broadcast January 15th, 1946, and the local department stores. <laughs> From Hollywood, Red Skelton with Gigi Pearson, Verna Felton, our tiny singer Anita Ellis, Pat McGee and David Forrester in his orchestra, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. <laughs> Pleasure to bring you Metro Golden Mayor's popular comedian and the star of the Rolly Cigarette Program, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Red. Hello, Rod. Hello, Red. Hello, Red. Hello, Rod. Hello, Red. Hello, Red. Hello, Rod. Boy, I'll bet Bob Hope wish he had material like that. <laughs> hey, Rod, did you hear the good news? I found a place to live. You really found a place to live? Yeah, but I don't know what I'll do if Lassie comes home. <laughs> well, say, Red, uh, where did you get that black eye? Oh, the black eye? Oh, well, that's a little thing I picked up in a department store. Were you in a fight? No, a bargain sale. <laughs> Boy, clothes are really sure hard to get. You know, I went into one men's store, and I told the clerk that I wanted a new suit. What'd he say? Oh, nothing. He just stood there in his DVDs and laughed. (laughs) Well, you know, you should have bought something for this nice California spring weather. Yes, haven't we? (laughs) Spring weather. You know, it's been so cold out here in California. The other night, Veronica Lake frozen over. a new way to use the English language. Huh? No kidding, I drove to the studio tonight and I saw a good humor man selling hot bricks. <laughs> well, you know, I read where you're going to Philadelphia tonight to present the Poor Richard Award to Ted Gamble. That's right. Good old Philadelphia, the home of independence. Yeah, with a branch office in Reno. <laughs> but Reno's the world's largest separation center, you know. Well, you know, poor Richard was Benjamin Franklin. Yes. There was a great man with great sayings. You know, I love his saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, the United Steel Workers are using one of his sayings as a slogan. Strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> great saying. Hello, Rad. Hello, Rod. Say, uh... Uh... <laughs> Say uh, where'd you get the black eye? Oh, the black eye. Well, I'd rather not talk about it. Well, uh, speaking of Benjamin Franklin, have you heard the saying, a fool and his $51 soon part? <laughs> If he's a gun collector. (laughs) Yes, I uh, heard that. (laughs) 
Well, say when you were held up, Red, were you nervous? Nervous? I was shaking so bad, I had a glass of milk, and I stuck my hand up, and when I pulled it down, I had a pound of butter. <laughs> well, what kind of a gun is a P-38 Luger? Well, you've heard of guns that shoot three miles and then throw rocks at you? Yeah. Well, one of these guns uh, shoots three miles, throws rocks at you, and then pleases up the area. <laughs> Oh, hello, Anita. Say, you, you look a little nervous. What's wrong with you? Well, when I got to the studio, some man chased me clear across the parking lot. No kidding. That's awful. Did you see who it was? No, it was too dark. But I fixed him. I pulled off my shoe and hit him in the eye. Oh. <laughs> in the eye, huh? The first story from our Skelton scrapbook of satire is entitled Local Department Store. Our characters are fictional. If there's any similarity to persons living, they must be characters. <laughs> Chapter 57 is entitled Nylon Counter. Most people think a department store clerk's life is a happy one. But in the locker room, we can always find the manager giving the sales force a pep talk. <laughs> Ah, good morning, good morning. I wasn't the traffic awful this morning. Cars were parked so close that... Goodness me. Well, uh, cars were parked so close this morning. I, I don't know what I'm doing in the music department here. <laughs> you know, I took out my hand to make a left turn and somebody shook it. <laughs> Stole my engagement ring, too, then. Mr. Numskull, do you realize that you're late again? What's your excuse this time? I had to go back for a package of Raleigh cigarettes. Now, let's see you bowl me out for that one. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, in the future, be on time. Uh-oh. We're installing a new time clock. If you punch it late, it punches you back. Yeah. <laughs> now, clerks, pay attention. Today is the opening of our big clearance sale. Oh. Miss Dowd, you'll be in women's shoes department. Yes, sir. J. Newton Numskull. Yes, sir. You'll work the nylon stocking counter. Holly Vogue nylon stocking counter? <laughs> you mean murder incorporated. <laughs> you can't do this to me. I was assigned to limited duty. Other men have done it? I said other men have done it. Yeah, but they were expendable. <laughs> You're such a weakling. I don't see how you got through our basic training course. Well, I should have never let you talk me out of enlisting in that Army and Navy store. <laughs> <laughs> well, back up, Newton. Remember, ours is not to reason why. Ours is but to do and die. Well, wait a minute. I got a wife and child. I haven't lived yet. Why don't you let Sneer do it? He's tasted butter. <laughs> Sorry, nylon stockings. Oh, you can't do this to me. I'll do anything you say. Even water your coronation in your lapel during my lunch hour. Oh, please, don't you realize I'm not a strong man? Remember what happened to Quigley? Oh, it was horrible, that one. It didn't last through ten sales. And I saw those women outside when I came to work this morning. Spike heels and long red fingernails. <laughs> They ain't human, I tell you. They ain't human. I beg of you, don't put me on the, the nylon counters. <laughs> you slap me. I'm sorry I had to hit you, old man. But you have your orders. If you don't carry them out, I'll have to assign you to KP. No, not Kitty's plaything. <laughs> Set your watches. Another minute to a zero hour. Oh, let him come. I can't stand it. Really, I can't stand it. He fainted. <laughs> Maybe we're being punished for the way we treated customers during the war. <laughs> Ready, everyone? I'm going to open the door. Let him come, let him come. <laughs>
From January 15, 1946, Red Skelton. I'm Wyatt Cox. You're listening to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite radio station. Classic Radio Theater family, you know our friend Mike Lindell has a passion to help everyone get the best sleep of your life. He didn't stop by just creating the best pillow. He created the best bed sheets ever. They look and feel great, which means an even better night's sleep for me because, you know, I'm working like 67 hours a day. Now, Mike's offering the best deal on this Giza Dreams bed sheets ever. You can get a set of Giza sheets for as low as $29.98. You'll never want to sleep on anything else once you sleep slept on a set of Giza Dream sheets. A special offer for you right now. You can get a set of Giza sheets for as low as $29.98. Call 1-800-928-4715. Use the promo code WYATT or go to MyPillow.com. Use the promo code WYATT. It's good on anything on the website. That number again, 1-800-928-4715. Use my promo code WYATT. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station. We're listening to Red Skelton this hour in a broadcast from uh, January 15th, 1946. You know, Red Skelton was quite the performer. He did motion pictures. He was in radio from 1937 until 1957. He was in television from 1951 until 1971. And in fact, uh, uh, it, he he quite frankly was also making 125 personal appearances a year. But what is interesting is that at the time of his death, his art dealer said he thought Red Skelton earned more money through his paintings than from his television performances, because they said he was earning more than two and a half million dollars a year on lithograph sales, copies from 1964 until his passing in 1997. That's a big chunk of money. If you have never seen his photos, they originally showed them uh, in the Sands Hotel in 1964 while he was performing there. And uh, his original paintings were sold very well, and he did a wonderful job. If you've never seen his clown paintings, you have missed something. January 15, 1947, The Red Skeleton Show. Chapter 58 is entitled, Soddyville Shoplifters. At one time or another during our shopping career, we've come in contact with a clerk who's inefficient, or slow, or appears stupid, or clemkadiddlehopper. Get ready for the big sale today. I'll check the cash register here. Now, let's see. How much have we taken in so far today? $3.50. <laughs> Another dollar fifty. I can start working for the store. <laughs> Boy, what a sale. Everything is 50% off. Except me, of course. <laughs> I'm 100% that way. <laughs> oh, here's a customer. <clears throat> Howdy doody, ma'am. What can I do for you for? Well, I don't know just yet. <laughs> I'm trying to pick out something from a husband's birthday. Oh? If you were my husband, what would you want? A divorce, if I could get it. <laughs> now, uh, let me see. Do you have any smoking jackets? Well, it, 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 what? <laughs> smoking jackets. No, we got some old bathrobes back here and a box of matches. <laughs> That's too fast for her. She didn't get it. I think I'll take that shirt. How much is it? That's $4. $4 for a shirt like that? Well, what are you kicking about? They cost five. <laughs> well, if they cost five and you sell them for four, how do you make any money? We own the parking lot at Santa Anita. <laughs> Some women are so dumb. You know. Did you get a job in this store anyway? Well, they needed someone with enough personality to keep the window dummies company. <laughs> I barely passed the test, of course. I'm going to report 
talk to you. Where can I find the manager of the store? He's out shopping. Why doesn't he shop here? His credit ain't no good. <laughs> Well, Sarah, do. Howdy doody to you, too. Clem? Mm -hmm. Clem, did you hold out some N-Y-L-O-N-S for me? N-Y-L-O-N-S? Uh-huh. <laughs> Boy, is she dumb. She can't even spell butter. Tom, you're a moron. And I made it without any help from you. Oh, yeah? Well, I dare you. I would like to see you do this, to coin a phrase. Oh. Well, that's what I like, is a woman who'll take orders. <laughs> I'm reporting you to the manager. Oh, go ahead, old... Oh, no, Clem, see what you did. Oh, I don't care. I'm a little nervous. Uh, hey, why'd you like to have lunch with me? Hmm? Well, what time is it, Clem? Well, it's about... That's funny. My watch is gone. My Mickey Mouse took a powder. <laughs> I've been robbed, but my quarter for lunch is gone, too. Oh, oh and my gold-plated pencil, well, he's gone, too. There's a pickpocket in the store. Oh, yesterday there were some complaints about pickpockets, too. They were picking the pockets of the pickpockets. Clem, do you think that maybe that woman could have taken your watch? Well, we'll find out. Come on, I'm on her trail. Come on. Go in here. Hey, Mr. McGinn, did you see a big woman with a voice like an echo? Yes, I was just showing her this piano. What piano? Good heavens, it's gone. <laughs> oh, you're right, Clem. She's our man. She's a kleptomaniac. Well, politics ain't going to help her. <laughs> Maybe she's in this reducing department over here. Come on, here. You know what, dear? I lost four pounds. And we know who took them. Come on, let's go get her. Come on. Bill, hurry up, Clem, before she gets away. Let's take this elevator. Maybe she'll get on there. You? Well, Clem, you're supposed to open the doors first. This ain't no time for details. <laughs> Come on, let's get on the elevator. <laughs> Boy, that dirty thief stole the elevator. <laughs> Chapter 59 in our Skelton Scrapbook is entitled, Children's Department. When a clerk is bad, he's punished by having to work in the children's department. And it's considered capital punishment when a customer like Junior, the mean little kid, comes in. <laughs> Dummy, dum, 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 now, dum, we're dum. going into this store to buy you some shoes. Okay. And I know you're going to behave, aren't you? <laughs> you know, at times that trusting old soul talks like a stranger in town. <laughs> uh, Junior. Yes? Go well, oh, uh, sit down while Grandma looks at some socks for your grandfather. Okay, kiddo. Oh, boy. Oh, look at that big stack of shoe boxes. Mm. <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> they make me mouth water. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if I accidentally bumped into them on purpose, huh? <laughs> Maybe Grandma wouldn't see me, huh? And then again, maybe she would. And then again, I don't know why I'd waste me time thinking about it. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Here goes the bottom box. <laughs> Completed. Junior, hmm? what happened? Uh, what happened? I don't know. Take it up with the fact-finding board. I don't know. All these boxes fall down. They just fell, did they? Yeah, they just fell. And you had nothing to do with them falling? Well, they, they fell. I was standing here and I uh, was... And, uh, uh -huh. oh, I might have nudged them away. Oh, you know. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yes. Now sit down and act like a little gentleman. No. <laughs> okay. Pretty bright today, aren't you, Junior? Are you going to buy me some shoes, are you, Grandma? Yes, dear. <laughs> and when you get your new shoes, I want you to be a little more careful with them. Yeah, is they going to fit me this time, or do I have to grow into them? <laughs> 
Now, Granny knows what's best for you. Can I have some cowboy boots like Roy Rogers wear some? If you don't stop kicking tin cans, I'll get you some like his horse Trigger wears. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Well, 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 well. Good morning, madame. Yes. We'd, uh, we'd like to see some shoes for the little boy. Yes. For the little boy? Yes. yes. Uh, well, uh, then, how would you like some pumps? You mean those patent leather shoes? Uh, yes. With little bows in the front? Yes. Very thin soles? Yes. Wouldn't wear a pair to a dog fight. <laughs> I like them cowboy boots like Roy Rogers wear. I see. Well, yeah. now, let me see. I I think I have something that you will like here. Well, that's maybe Let's see. How about some nice white shoes? Oh, no. Black or brown will be better for him. Well, get me some white ones. I can darken them in no time. <laughs> well, well, well. Now, here, let, let, let's try these here yeah, off okay. the size. Now, okay. now, give me your foot. Take your shoes off there. Take them off. Okay. Well, untie them first. <laughs> You think you almost pulled me with a leg off. Well, I, I'm very, very sorry. Here, give me your foot. No, no, no. Now, no, come on, give me your foot. We'll no, try no, the no, shoes no, no, on them. No, let me give me it. your foot. No, let go of me, but I'm gently. Just oh, down. Come on. No, 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 I can't tell him why he's at the bottom of his foot. Well, Sonny, try to stand it for just a second. Give me your foot. Come on. Let me have your foot. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Now, let go of me. Stop me foot. kicking me in the face. From January 15th, 1946, The Red Skelton Show. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We'll hear the conclusion along with an episode of Lum and Abner following these important messages right here from your favorite radio station. Listening to Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station. Now the conclusion of the Red Skelton Show. As it was originally broadcast January 15th, 1946, Junior is causing havoc again. So what else is new? Junior! Junior, quit at this very minute! Uh, where did my uppers go? <laughs> that is on the enemy fortress <laughs> now. Look at him sneer! Look at him sneer! Look at him sneer! Look at him sneer. <laughs> on purpose? <laughs> well, now, really, Grandma, does I look like the type of a little boy that would do something like that on purpose? Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't get very far that time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about my cowboy boots like Roy Rogers wear? I'd like to give you some boots where they do the most good. Yeah, I got that. Go ahead. <laughs> Put this shoe on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> look at that shoe. Look what it's doing to me. And I'll teach it. I'll show that shoe. <laughs> Yeah. Good yeah. heavens, why did you throw that shoe through the showcase? Ah, oh, Jesus, just stick his tongue out at me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't want shoes. I want a pair of boots like Roy Rogers. All right, but. all right. If you really want them, try them on. I don't think they're practical, but anything to get you home in a hurry. Ah, <laughs> oh, Granny, you wasn't with me. <laughs> you were just kidding me. <laughs> oh, no? Well, you just keep laughing, kiddo, that's all. <laughs> now, try those boots on. Okay, I will. There, oh boy, they just like Roy Rogers wear. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, you can walk in them, but uh, be careful. The bottom's awfully slippery. <laughs> Look hard off. I know what you're hoping. But don't worry, I don't fall down. Don't worry. My heels up. No, I didn't fall. I didn't fall. I didn't fall. I just lay down on the floor to catch me breath. <laughs> I didn't fall. It wasn't the boots fault, really. It was. Don't take the boots away from me. I love. I learned to walk in on my own. Please, I want the boots so bad. Oh, don't. Don't take the boots away from me. No. Oh, just like boy wanted. Poor baby. Wanted the boots so bad. Yes, he wants the boots so bad. Bless his little heart. Yeah, bless his little heart. <laughs> Don't cry. I want the boots. Will you take those? I want the boots so bad. Back them up. Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, now, really, you shouldn't have done it, Grandma. <laughs> and I'll make out the bill for the boots and 
one showcase. Oh. <laughs> well. Hey, Grandma, what made you change your mind? Why are you going to buy me the boots now? Hmm? Well, I changed because of the picture poster on the wall of that little child. Really? Mm. Boy, what kind of shoes is that little kid wearing? I never seen nothing like that before. What is that? Those are special shoes with braces. Really? That little child has infantile paralysis. It's a dreadful disease that takes hold when we least expect it. It's our most deadly enemy. Well, why don't the people do something about it to stop it? They stop the Germans and the Japs, they do. They're doing everything they can, but it takes money. You mean they have to ask growing up people to give money for something so important? You know, Grandma Kiddo, sometimes I'm afraid to grow up, you know. I might get like some of them people. Everybody seems to want something in return for a little money nowadays, don't they? Hmm? Junior, in this case, for every cent that's given to the March of Dimes, something better than money is received in return. Good health for a lot of little children. Well, Grandma, I tell you what. Yes. You take the boots and t- tell them not to wrap them up. You send that money to them little kids, because I really don't need the boots, you know. You send the money to the March of Dimes, and then the next time I see some little kid who's well and running down the street, I will say to myself, well, there goes me cowboy boots like Roy Watkins. <laughs> Until next Tuesday, then, this is Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening, and remember the March of Dimes. And remember, listen to Hildegard tomorrow night, and the people are funny without Link Letter Friday night over most of these stations. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor. January 15th, 1946, the Red Skelton Show. Uh, Red Skelton believed in the 1970s when his show was canceled, not only off of CBS but NBC, that his show was canceled because of the anti-establishment, anti-war faction at the height of the Vietnam War, saying his conservative political and social views caused the network to turn against him. He had invited prominent Republicans, including Vice President Spiro Agnew and Senate Republican Minority Leader Everett Dirks and one of the Senate's strongest supporters of the war, to appear on his show. Now, never mind that Dirksen was a top recording artist and a lot of spoken word uh, gallant men, a great hit, and he did a lot of recordings, uh, but uh, a lot of changes in the life of Red Skelton after the 70s. But he still did lots of live performances, including on college campuses, which is part of the reason it proved that the network's uh, answers and the reasons why they were uh, uh, dodging him were all wet. From January 15th, 1946, oh, I guess I should mention that Red Skelton died on September 17th, 1997 at the Eisenhower uh, Medical Center in Rancho Mirage, California. He was 84 after what was described as a long, undisclosed illness. Um, We miss him. We could use somebody who has that kind of comedy today. Red Skelton, January 15th, 1946, on Classic Radio Theater. I have been remiss in not taking us to Pine Ridge, Arkansas lately, to visit with our old friends Lum and Abner, And we're going to head now to January 15th, 1945. It appears that Lum has been competing in a singing contest. And let's hear about how Lum did. My granny, Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I know it, Lum. I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, this is the day that Lum is expected to return home from the singing contest at Hot Springs. So far, Abner has not learned the results of Lum's efforts in the contest. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Grandpappy Spears is just entering. Listen. Oh, 
I am. Oh, well, howdy, Grandpa. Hey, he's here, Abner. He's here. Who, who's here? Well, Lom. He just now got in town. Well, good for Lom. Uh, did he say how he come out in the contest? No, no. I ain't had a chance to talk with him yet. I oh. think he stopped in down there at the barber shop, and I rest up here to tell you he's coming. Oh, well, I'm proud you done that, Grandpa. <laughs> no, I'll sure be glad to see that old rascal again. He's been out of town there four or five days. Yeah, Pine Ridge don't quite seem the same without old Lum. Never oh, does. No, it don't hurt that store neither. It sure don't. Yeah, how come you don't already know how he come out in the contest? Ain't he, he, ain't he been writing to you? Well, now, there's a peculiar thing, Grandpa. He sent me that first postcard telling me how he was having an awful time and suffering, and that's the last I heard from him. Huh. Well, he must have win for he he would he to come right over here. He wanted to stop by the barber shop and brag on it a while. I reckon. You reckon he did, Charlie? Well, him? could have been. Well, I don't know. I hadn't heard a word from him, not a word. I didn't know he was over there suffering, though. Well, he said he was, and that card I got from him said he wasn't having a good time and he was suffering. You know, he was dreading that singing contest, yeah. scared to death. Jimmy, you don't reckon he went and suicided himself, do you? I don't that I never thought of it. Er, wait a minute. What's the matter with us? He's right here in town. You said you just now said Oh, him. yeah, that's right. Sure, <laughs> what's the matter with me? Feller can't walk around after he's suicide. No, of course not. Of course not. Well, I wish he'd hurry and get up here. I want to ask him how he come out in that singing contest. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking, Grandpap. I don't much believe we ought to ask him that. Oughtn't to ask him? No, no, it'll be too embarrassing for him. As bad as he's bound to a did in the contest, why... He ain't going to want to talk about that to nobody, I know. And he won't talk about it if he never win, and he won't want to talk about it if he did win. If he won it, he won't be speaking to you. Well, we better not mention it, I don't believe. Yeah, I'd love to know what happened, though. Yeah, well, we'll find out someday. After this whole thing sort of blowed over, why, he'll more than likely break down and tell us just exactly how he come out, you know. Well, I'd rather know right now, though. Yeah, but please Please don't ask him, Grandpa. Just don't bring up the subject. Don't even mention it. For my sake, don't do it. For your sake? Yeah. See, I feel sort of guilty about this whole thing myself. I was the one that actually talked Lum into going over there to Hot Springs and singing in the contest. I don't know now why I ever done it, but, well, at the time, it seemed like a good idea, I reckon, to Yeah, I never could understand it myself, having to be right honest. Seemed pretty pigeon-toed to me. Yeah, it was. I admit it now. Done wrong. Hog calling contest, yes. But Lum singing. Don't sound like no, it. No, no. I know now what a terrible embarrassing thing I got him into. I just hope he's still speaking to me, though. Oh, he'll speak to you all right. Well, I don't know. Unless he win, that'll go to his head. He won't speak to nobody then. Well, he ain't been writing to me, you know that. Dog as I'm almost a fear to face him. Well, now, you oughtn't to feel that way, Abner. You was just doing this to help Lum, just trying to get Miss Emmeline interested in him, and you sure done that, ain't you? Well, yeah. Of course sort of. you have. I know every time I've been in the store here the last few days, she's called up to find out what you've heard from him. Yeah, but I don't know how she's going to feel towards him when she finds out what a terrible failure he was, though. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Yeah, I never had thought about that. Oh, that's right. Might have spoiled everything. Yeah, that'll be bad, Grandpa. See, she's been so proud of Lum ever since I... Got her to thinking that he had such a wonderful baritone voice, you know. Well, Abner, you don't reckon there's a, there's a chance that Lum win that contest? Maybe second or third place, please, please. No, no, no. Not with that voice of his and Grandpa. No, no, that's right. I reckon not. Well, you ought to know. You've heard him sing over at the church. Yeah, I know I have. That's why I always try to set as far away from him as I can. Yeah. Logan, I wish I never had advised him to go to Hot Springs. No, you made a mistake there. You oughtn't have did it. Mm. No. You know, Grandpap, I, I I believe I'll get plumb out of the advice business. Just get plumb out of it. I'm a failure at it, sure, the world. Fact is, if I'm going to open up anything, I'm going to open up an unadvised business. I think that's yeah, what I'll do. do better at it, I believe, Abner. Yeah, yeah, well, I ain't been doing good lately at the advice business. I know that. Well, I know you sure never done no good for old Larry Hodgkins. No, I know I never. Uh, I know. You advised him to change jobs with his women and, and his mom-in-law, so... They went down to the liver stable to run that while Ari stayed home and done the washing, and now the liver stable's starting to make money, and his women folks won't let him back in it. Grandpap, you don't need to tell me all that. I know it. Fact says I know it too well. Don't even want to bring the subject up. Old Ari keeps coming in here crying on my shoulder. Blames me for everything. So mad at me won't hardly speak except well, to bowl me out. Natural, natural. <laughs> well, it just shows what you get when you try to help somebody. 
It's gratitude for you. Lose a friend over trying to help him. Well, Abner, no feller ought to go around trying to tell some other feller how to run his business. I don't, I don't know, know how you come to start that in the first place. I what in the world ever give you the idea that you could start a advice business? Well, I advised one or two fellers about different things. and it turned out pretty good, and I just sort of thought I had a talent for it. All right, Jiminy, wait a minute. Huh? There he comes. Huh? There's old Lum. He ain't changed a bit. Oh, well, he's just been gone a few days. Natural won't be much of a change. Look at them steps he's taking. <laughs> Uh, recollect now, don't start asking him nothing about the singing contest. Oh, no, I won't. It's your love, too, though. I'm yeah, just dying to find out how it's coming. Well, howdy, Lom, old boy. Come on in here, you old <laughs> rascal. <laughs> well, howdy, Abner. Hello there, Grandpat. Well, howdy, Lom. Yeah, come on over here and sit down, Lom. That <laughs> right, dog, it is sure good to see you home again. <laughs> it's sort of nice to get back again. <laughs> yeah, more than likely to be a little dull after all, uh, well, after everything. Yeah, well, oh, so. how did you come, I mean, uh, uh, how was your trip, Lum? Oh, pretty good, Grandpa, it wasn't bad. You know how trips are, you go when you come. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that's the way they are, you go when you come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, how, how you feeling, Lum? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good, a little tired, of course. Special my voice. Oh. Huh. Say, that reminds me, Lum. How do you... Shut up, Grandpap. Oh. Uh, I suppose you fellas have been wondering about, uh, well, wondering different stuff about me. Yeah, yeah, we have, yeah. Uh, I've been wondering, uh, well, uh, how you're feeling. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good. Well. A little tired in my voice, though. Uh-huh. You know how a fellas voice will get when he, well, when he uses it quite a lot. Yeah, huh Reckon so. Abner, don't you reckon we could just ask? Him? No, Grandpap, no. Well, sit down, Mom, old boy. I don't... Uh, oh, yeah. Sitting down, ain't you? <laughs> uh, well, I reckon you've been sort of wondering how everything's been going at the store here, long. Well, to be honest, Abner, I just ain't had much time to think about the store. I've been so busy with my... Well, I've been busy. Oh. Yep, yeah, I've been pretty busy. Well... That's nice. Abner, don't you think we... No. Well, uh... Well, how are you, Lum? Oh, you said you feel all right, though, didn't you? Yeah, I'm I'm all right. A little tart in the voice is all. Oh. The voice. Yeah. Was anybody in the store asking about me while I was gone? Was there any phone calls or anything? Well, yeah, uh... Miss, uh, Emmeline called... She did? Yeah, the fact is she called my now every day you was gone. Well, bless her heart. Uh, did she ask about anything in particular? Yeah, she wanted to know, uh, how you come out and, or, uh, well, she she wanted to know, uh, how you was feeling, I think. Is, is that all she asked? Well, that's all I can think of right offhand, I believe. Oh. She didn't ask about, about anything else, huh? Well, it's hard for me to recollect, Lum. I've been so busy here at the store since you've been gone. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure, been busy. Papa helped me out some, or I never would have got to work then. Yeah. Uh, say, Grandpa, you started to ask me a question a while ago. What was that? Well, what I wanted to find out, Lum, is how you Grandpa, come out... Grandpap. Huh? Don't you have to go on home now? I know. I don't have to go home or no place else. Then Charity called you and told you to get on over to the place no, or something? Not that I know of. Fact says she's over visiting Miss Pomeroy today. Oh. Well, just watch yourself then. Yeah, all right. What's the matter? Is it too hot in here for you, Lum? Notice you keep opening the front of your coat there. Why, uh, I believe it is a little warm in here, now that you mention it. Well, I hadn't noticed it. <laughs> Fact is, I thought it was sort of chilly. Didn't you, Grandpa? Yeah, I did. I just sitting here wishing I had my fascinator on. But if you're too warm, Loma, I'll open a window for you. No, 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 don't do that. I don't want to put you to no trouble. Why, it ain't no trouble. Be proud to do it. No, don't bother. I'll just slip my coat off here. It's too tight for me anyway. Yeah, well, you'd rather. Of course, I'll still be glad to open up to it. <laughs> for the land sakes, Loma, what's that pinned on your vest there? Huh? Looks like a ribbon of some kind. Oh, well, that little old thing. I forgot it was still on. Yeah, well, what's it for? Oh, I don't know. I... Forget just now. Well, what does it say on there? What's that print and stuff? Oh, don't ask me. I never did pay no attention to it. Well, wait it. a minute. Stand still so I can read it here. Yeah, there was so much clapping and hollering and whistling whenever they pinned it on me. I never did notice what it said. Fourth Annual Choral Society State Singing Contest. First prize, 
Solo division. First prize. I dog as long did you win first prize. <laughs> is that what it says? Oh, I love energy, you old rascal. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> I dog as I knowed all the time I'll give you the right advice. Yes, sir, I'm an advisor farmer. <laughs> Oh, they turned around real quick, didn't they? (laughs) From January 15th, 1945, Lum and Abner on Classic Radio Theater. This is Debbie Reynolds. If you've been wondering what you can do to fight communism personally from your own home, there is something you can do. Support Radio Free Europe, the station built and financed by the contributions of the American public to the crusade for freedom. Radio Free Europe is one Cold War operation the communists fear and attack constantly. Support Radio Free Europe. Send your truth dollars to Crusade for Freedom, care of your local postmaster. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station. Would you do me a favor? Take a moment to drop a card or a letter to your favorite radio station here. It is their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be on with you each and every time we roll around. And support the advertisers whose messages you hear. It is their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be here on your favorite station. Your support of them keeps this radio station alive and on the air. So thank the station and support the advertisers, please. It is more important than you realize. Visit my webpage, classicradio.stream. There you can stream our programs on demand. You can find out uh, how to contact us, follow us through social media. You can also contact me there and you can learn how to build a classic radio collection of your own. And also, by all means, our programs are available anywhere podcasts are served. So if you miss a day, you do not have to miss a single episode of Classic Radio Theater. Just search Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Have yourself a great day. And do me a favor. Tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station.